The moment is here, you can stop your search. It's Comics by Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, quick short and sweet mail. It says, hey Perch, what do you make of Marvel doing so many limited series announcements? There's a new Thanos series fighting the Illuminati by Christopher Cantwell, as well as multiple other comics that seem to only debut as limited series. When was the last time a comic actually debuted as an ongoing outside of this new Captain Marvel series? Um, uh, introduce your thoughts. Oh, okay, so first off, I guess um, I'll give you my opinion. Um, I, I hate it. Um, I don't like uh, this this over reliance on limited series. It feels like, you know, the company is um, it, it, what it, the impression it gives is that the company is just not wanting to commit to anything more serious, more long term, more um, significant. That at the moment we're going to live completely in a world of short term uh, series that that we're going to do stories at like little six issue if lucky kind of blips at a time and the challenge is um the, it feels to me like um none of these stories really matter like it's very easy in a limited series to roll out a earth-shaking status quo like hey here's a major development in monica rambo's life for this limited series they just did with spectrum but does it matter like she'd been dating blue marble and then now she is not it's just the, the relationship is over. The relationship happened between comics. So they, they never even actually acknowledged the breakup. They just kind of broke them up. I would be unsurprised if in a, another limited series or in an ongoing series, if Spectrum just shows up in comics, you know, six months from now, if she's back dating Blue Marvel again. And just like, I don't know, I, I fuck it. Like, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand. Um, None of this stuff seems to matter. And I think when you do things in complete limited series land, that's what you get. You get comics that, you know, you tell a story, but that story, where does it end in continuity? I mean, somewhere, more or less. But it doesn't really matter. And unless the specific writer shows up again to continue to tell their story, then, you know, it, it doesn't matter. So that, that's, that's the challenge. That's the challenge I got. Um, you know, there are certainly some ongoing series that that uh, that are you know in play. You know, we still have Wolverine, for example. We still have X Force. Some of the uh, you know the X titles continue. Uh, we've relaunched the Avengers some you know regularly, but the Avengers title is um, is ongoing. We have a Venom title. We have a Ghost Rider title. We have a Spider Man title. So it's not like Marvel, for example, is nothing but limited series, but there are a lot, I mean, it, it is just, the, the announcements are far more weighted to short-term blip stories than anything else. And that, I think, is, uh, is negative. Um, and I give you the big reason why. It's, it's because it, it's very easy for the publisher to kind of ignore that anything happened. So the question is, um, you know, what do you like? So when I, I brought this up to, to Marvel, and I recently uh, brought this up to uh, to Marvel, um, the answer I got was, well, the fans prefer it that way. Actually prefer it that way. Um, do you? I have a hard time believing that you do, but that's what the publishers think. Certainly Marvel, and I suspect DC largely does as well. But that's what they believe. They believe that you, the fan, would rather have the short term, you know, short series than an ongoing. And I, I've never actually seen any indication that that is true. But that that is what uh, that's what they believe. Um, to me, I think there it's it's valuable to have a healthy mix between the between ongoing and limited series. I think it's it's valuable to, you know, have a core group of of ongoing comics. Again, not unlike what they do now. You have an Avengers title, you have a Spider-Man title, you have a X-Men title. Um, and I think some some you know limited series make sense, but I think the ratio is like 75%, 25% for me. And today, if I'm just looking at the solicitations, we're about 60-40 for limited series comics, not ongoings, which sounds hard to believe, but that's that's where we're at. 
I think the advantage, well, one of the advantages of a limited series format is that it does give companies a chance to, you know, give the spotlight to characters who couldn't carry an ongoing title. But I think in today's comic market, you have to question if, if a character can't carry an ongoing title, you know, can they carry a limited series either? It's quite possible, quite likely that they really, you know, this, this comic doesn't, isn't going to live either way. It's not going to live as uh, as a short book or a long book. So that's not necessarily a ringing endorsement for, you know, for, uh, <laughs> for, for comics, um, certainly not for, for featuring some of these characters. Um, a, a lot of it has to do with the MCU. The fact that you get a uh, MCU show out and Marvel Comics want to have some synergy with that. And so you see them like this is how they're going to suddenly crank out a Scrolls book or a Nick Fury book in, in alignment with Secret Invasion. Some of it is a publishing strategy where, yeah, She-Hulk was an ongoing series, but then they canceled it, kept the writer, and relaunched it with a brand new number one for, you know, reasons of somebody somewhere inside the comic company believes this is how you make money here. So there's, a, there's just, there's a lot of reasons why we wind up here, but I think that there's some, you know, if you get a good ongoing comic, it creates a good bedrock of sales. One of the things I guess I'd point to is, you know, The Amazing Spider-Man, yes, it's been relaunched, but it's more or less been an ongoing comic for a long period of time. Same thing with Batman. Perhaps not coincidentally, those two are also the top-selling comics that are in the shop. So, you know, if if you believe that ongoing series are a liability, why is it that your two top-selling books are ongoing comics? And in fact, if you look at the monthly sales numbers, even the estimates that we get today, you know, other than event books, almost all the bottom selling books are the limited series books. Look, the uh, New Mutants Lethal Legion comic didn't sell well. It was a limited series. It didn't do very good. The Sabretooth and the Exiles didn't do very well. It was a limited series. X-Force did better. Wolverine did better. Uncanny X-Men. Even the uh, Immortal X-Men or X-Men Red. Those books all do better than the little limited series they played along with. And Again, I, th I think in, in some cases, it's, um, it's also what the comic shops are more comfortable for ordering. You know, publishers like to say, or, or not all of them, but we've heard the comment of, hey, our, our true customer is a comic shop, not the uh, end consumer, not the fan. What they mean by that is a comic shop's ordering the book. Well, I'll tell you one thing, from the standpoint of a retailer, we prefer to order ongoing comics. Way more than a limited series. Limited series is a pain in the ass on, on almost every front. You've got to remember it. You've got to put in the catalog. You've got to check uh, who's going to order it. Your pull box customers are not naturally going to order it. So you got to do something special to make them aware that it exists. You have to find shelf space for it, which is at times uh, you know painful, depending on how your shelf is laid out. It's I, I mean, all many of these things are trivial, but all of them represent a tiny bit of friction. And when you add them all up together, a lot of retailers just order light on limited series books. They just do. Um, it's very normal and natural for them to do that. So I think that's where, you know, you get into this hiccup of it's just not healthy to have books out like this. So that's um that that's my answer. I, I but my question is to you again, the publishers believe that you, the fan, the customer, prefer a limited series to an ongoing book. So what do you think? What would you rather have? Um I, I again, I've, I've always been surprised and slightly stunned by that uh, belief because it doesn't correspond to anything that I see inside the shop. But maybe you have a different opinion. And, uh, you know, and, and please, no cheating with the answer of, uh, well, you know, for a lot of these books, I'd prefer a limited series or no series because the character sucks so much. OK, I, I get that. But you, you know my point. What would you rather have? And do you think it's healthy or unhealthy for the comic industry? To do? I need to start. By the way, if I want to go out with a bang, and, and uh, you know, the last few videos this channel has left, I need to start talking more like uh, the YouTube videos that my kids watch. You ever heard these? It's like top 20 scariest swimming pools in the country. And the guys, the, the, the announcer is always like, can you believe that there's a swimming pool even more scary than a bag full of spiders? Well, there is. Here's one that leans over the side of a building. Boy, I'll bet that's scary. I, I could start to narrate comic. Is there a comic YouTube channel that talks like this? By the way, if, if, if any of you know, if you've heard this kind of stuff, you could appreciate it. Otherwise, you think I'm nuts right now. But it's it would be like, do you believe that a mini series could outsell a regular series? Comic publishers think so. But what do you think? 
let me know in the comments below and like and subscribe. That will help me be fed. Oh my goodness, back to more comic news. Anyway, thanks for listening.